Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we're going to learn how to prepare a schedule of cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold. Now, you should be familiar with cost of goods sold much, much more than cost of goods manufactured. Why? Because if you remember from your financial accounting, the way we compute cost of goods sold is we take beginning inventory. And here I am discussing for a, uh, a retailer, beginning inventory, plus what we add to the inventory is what we purchased, plus purchases. That's going to give us goods available for sale. And from that, we will deduct, we count ending inventory, and we deduct, we deduct ending inventory. And what we get to, to cost of goods sold. So, so let's use some numbers. Let's assume we started with beginning inventory of 20. We purchased $80 worth of merchandise. We had $100 avail available of goods. Then we counted ending inventory and we find that we still have $10 of ending inventory. It means our cost of goods sold is $90. So this is easy. Why? Because when we purchase inventory, it's just easy to know how much we purchased. What's going to happen is this for a manufacturing for a manufacturing company they're going to have beginning inventory then instead of they don't purchase they, they are not going to purchase something they are going to manufacture something they are going to manufacture something therefore we have to substitute purchases or cost of goods manufactured so basically we have to compute the cost of goods manufactured. Why? Because we have to plug it in to find cost of goods sold. And hopefully you remember what's cost of goods manufactured include. It will include direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. So this is basically what goes into the cost of goods manufactured. So let's go ahead and start to compute this. So this is what schedule will show. The schedule we're going to be preparing, it's going to show material, labor, and overhead. The cost of the material, the cost of the labor, and the applied overhead because we are using a normal costing system. And the, the manufacturing cost associated with goods that were finished during the period. So this is what we're gonna sh this is what we're gonna show. So the best way to illustrate this is to work an actual example with some numbers. Okay. So first remember we're gonna have to determine how much material. Okay, material. So how do we compute how much material? Now, if we purchased $100 of material and we consumed $100 of material, then it's easy. Then we use the whole thing. But that's not what usually happens. So we want to know how much material we used. So how do we find out how much material we used? There's a formula. Beginning raw material. Let's assume I'm going to use some numbers. That's We started the beginning raw material with $10. Then we purchased $90 of raw material. We had raw material available for use $100. Then we counted our ending material at the end of the period and we figure out we still have $20 of raw material on hand. It means we consumed $80. So this is the first part. We just find out how much direct material we used. Okay, we purchased 100. I'm sorry, uh, we purchased 90 but we only used up 80. How did we know this? Because what's left is 20 and we started with 10. So this is the material. So we're done with the material. So the direct material used is $80. Then what we have to add to the direct material, we said the direct material is $80. We have to add the labor. And let's assume the labor was $200. It's a labor intensive. And manufacturing overhead, I'm just gonna make up a number, $100, okay? Direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead gives us $380. And this is the total manufacturing cost. This is the total manufacturing cost. Now, this is what we consumed this period, what we consumed in material, labor, and overhead. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to have a work in process. So this is, we said this is $380. Okay, this is $380. Now, what is work in process? What would, what, what's going to happen in a, many, in a manufacturing environment? We're going to have partially completed unit from the prior period. And we happen to have $40 worth of partially completed unit from the prior period. Therefore, we added 380 this, this period, 380 plus 40 equal to 420 of total work in process. Now, are we going to finish everything in work in process? No, we, have, we started with 40, added 380, but we're going to have some left. Let's assume what's left is 20. 
what's left is 20. So we, we, we were up to 420, and what's left is 20. So if we take total work in process, 380 minus the 20 will give us cost of goods manufactured of $400. Simply put, we find out this is the equivalent of what we, for a retailer, what they purchased. Here we did not purchase it, we manufacture it. So we man we spend $400 of in manufacturing, in manufacturing cost this period, cost of goods manufactured. Now we're not done yet. This is cost of goods manufactured, which, which is happens to be 400 which is happens to be 400 Now we look at our finished goods and we had... $100 already in finished goods from the prior period. So the $100 that's in the prior period finished goods plus $400 we spent this period, we had $500 available in cost of goods available for sale. Then we counted our ending inventory and we find out we still have $50 in ending inventory. What does that mean? It means our cost of goods sold is 450 And this is the cost of goods sold that's used on the income statement, sales minus cost of goods sold. So we had to go through several steps in order to find cost of goods sold. And the main step, we did everything to figure out this $400. And what goes under the $400? Material, labor, and overhead. Then we have, if we have work in process, we have to add beginning, subtract ending, and we get to cost of goods manufactured. Now I do, I will work another example with, co with this cost of goods manufactured, but let's look at few multiple choice questions that help us get familiar with this process. So let's assume, uh, what's the question? The question is, what's the total cost of direct material used? We have beginning material, 32,000, that's the beginning. That's the beginning raw material. During the month, 276 were purchased. We add 276 to it. That's gonna give us 308 of material available for sale. Account at the end of the month revealed that 28,000 was still present. It means that's the ending. What we do is we subtract the ending, minus 28, and by doing so, we'll get to the how much we used, which is 280,000. And the answer is 280,000, 280,000. Let's take a look at the second question. This, the question reads, what were the total manufacturing costs incurred? What's the total manufacturing cost? It's direct labor plus direct material, plus manufacturing overhead, okay? Direct material used in production, 280. They've just given us the amount, 280. Direct labor, I'm sorry, direct material, 280, not direct labor. Direct material is 280. Direct labor is, is 375. And 180 of manufacturing overhead was added. I'll just add them up. Zero, 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 five, eight, thirty-five, eight hundred and thirty-five, and that's your answer, eight hundred and thirty-five. Okay, let's take a look at this question. What was the cost of goods manufactured during the month? So what's the cost of goods manufactured? So this is the last step before we get the cost of goods sold. We have beginning work in process, 125. So beginning work in process, 125. Manufacturing cost, added the production for the month were 8, 835. And this number represent direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead, which is 835. Now we have we have what total work in process for the period, 950, 960, 960,000. There were 200,000 of partially finished goods many remaining in work in process. So we deduct the 200,000. And that's going to give us what's left, 760. And that's the answer. And the answer is right here, 760. Okay. Let's take a look at one more question. What is the cost of goods for the month? The cost of goods sold. Okay. So beginning, beginning finished goods inventory. So beginning, beginning inventory is 130. Cost of goods manufactured is 760. That's what we needed to compute, but it's already given to us. That's going to give us 0, 0, 0, 0, 9, 890. And the ending was 150. Then we subtract 150. And if we subtract 150, we come up with 740 for cost of goods sold, 740. And hopefully those exercises help illustrate and consolidate your knowledge about how to prepare cost of goods manufactured and cost of goods sold. Cost of goods manufacturing schedule and cost of goods sold. If you have any questions, any comments, 
um, email me or see me in class. If you're studying for your CPA, if you're studying for your CMA exam, make sure to study hard. Those topics are covered on the exam. Good luck.